Hey everyone, welcome to episode 2. Today we hit the road for our first premiership match against Gullawinku before heading to Dandenong for our second FFA Cup game against Dandenong City. We're certainly chalking up the frequent flyer miles in this episode, so let's get started. Gullawinku is a traditional Aboriginal community of approximately 2,500 people located on Elko Island in East Arnhem Land, which is part of the Wessels Island Group, northeast of Darwin. It is a community with restricted access and permission to visit is required by law and can be made through the Northern Land Council directly or via the Gallowinku Council. The Gallowinku community was established in 1942 as a refuge from possible bombing of the Millingimbi Royal Australian Air Force Base in 1942. At this time, Darwin had actually been bombed. The market garden was established, pushing the cypress, pine, logging and sawmill industry. The original mission was to encourage Aboriginal people to stay on their traditional lands and ended when self-government came in the 1970s. As we prepare to go on our humongous road trip in this episode, we can gladly welcome Dick Splash back to full training, and he will actually be in the lineup for the Gallowinku game. Also, we have managed to secure the services of Nikos Giorgio, a right back who will bolster our squad and just make it a little bit easier there. At the moment, we've got Bannerman, who's reasonable in that position, and we've been training our Levi Goldschmeckel as well, but he's not quite as accomplished as Nikos, and I think Nikos is actually going to really add value to us. One of the things about Australia is its vastness and the Northern Territory is no exception. It is 1.42 million kilometres squared in area so there will be a lot of travelling in this save. Today we are only travelling a mere 488 kilometres but in later episodes you'll actually see us go to the borders of Western Australia and Queensland which is a number of thousands of kilometres in distance. So I look forward to those trips uh, but now now let's get into the action shall we so here is the formation for today glad to be welcoming dick splash back into the team as we prepare for galawinku now we are playing on the dirt today there'll be a few occasions where we actually do that so it's a different experience for a lot of people to see this i would expect as keating plays it out to farts and he pushes it forward there trying to find splash but he is unable to do so galawinku pushing it forward now and Sandu from them has actually got the ball, although he's been dispossessed by Farts. But Galawinku have managed to retain possession. Putting it forward again, but the defence is pretty solid by the Humpty Doo boys. And Kerr has the ball on the attack, but he's actually put it into the stand. Two shots to nil so far, but not a lot in the game. As Beans takes the ball and ferries it back to Keating. Keating chips it over very uh, deftly there, but the ball's blocked. Toss a cock off uh, to Farts, and Farts has put it over the bar as well. Ten minutes in, the score is still nil-nil. Uh, that was a bit of a mistake by Gallowinko on their clearance back to Bannerman, and then Dixon Balls crosses it into Splash, and Splash is welcoming himself back to the team with a goal. One-nil after 11 minutes of play. Good vision by Bannerman, puts the ball through to Kerr, but Kerr was very, very quickly onto Dixon Balls, which actually set the play up, and then Splash puts the ball into the net. So Splash has had a welcome return, Dixon Balls playing well as well into the 21st minute now, as Kerr chips it in there, but that's really not to anybody, and the keeper makes no mistake there. Still 1-0 to Humpty Doo there after 21 minutes, and it's Keating with the ball, putting it forward, and... Gallowinku have retained possession there. Uh, Keating back to Dick Meister there, who patiently plays it back to Beans, who pushes up the, mi the middle there, but it's actually dispossessed, and it is Gallowinku on the attack there. Uh, we're playing a bit of ping pong here at the moment. The ball's going back and forward, but there's Kerr on the break, and that's a good save by the keeper there, putting it over the bar, but it does still mean that Kerr will to the corner he puts the ball in and it's actually gone over the goal line again so we've got a corner on the other side with Tosikok off crossing it in it's been cleared effectively by the defense though and it will be a throw in so Keating with the free kick now putting the ball in a good save again by the keeper but he's only managed to put it around the bar so there will be another corner there Tosikok off to put the ball in there cleared off the goal line again but Keating has the ball back uh, before Gallowinku push it forward. Collins drops back there to pick the ball up and retrieve it, but it is Gallowinku defending quite stoutly at the moment. 
Bannerman puts the ball through there. Kerr again on the ball and it's splash for goal number two for today. And his second goal of the season. So Galawinku are being pretty valiant here. Their defense is pretty solid, although they've just been opened up a couple of times there. But I do like their hustle. They're actually trying very hard here. But uh, a good build up there. Again, Kerr with the cross there, set that goal up nicely. Splash into the corner there. And Galawinku cleaner off their line again. And they're pushing forward in attack here. They've actually got numbers here, so, but it's, uh, Push forward and Dickmeister makes the save without a problem. Back to Beans and Farts then. Puts the ball across there and there's Dixon Balls. Puts a nice ball through to Collins and Splash gets his hat-trick. 3-0 now in the 30th minute of the day. So while Gallywinku have been pretty valiant in the way they've, they've tried to play this game, the class of Humpty Doos probably just standing out at the moment nice cross from Collins there and splash with the volley there into the net so the virtual table there has us on top there upper Rulam equal with us and Cox Peninsula as well as we are preparing for half time just going in there now and it's the second half with boy kicking off so farts pushes it forwards there to boy and it's gone wide just taking dick splash off at half time he uh Got his hat trick and he is returning from injury, so he just didn't want to take any risk with the boy. And Galawinku on the attack here. Can they actually do something and put a, bo a goal on the board there? And that's actually a good goal from Grant Soulsby. Excellent goal there, in fact. So, 3 1, they brought the, the game back. So, I wonder if there's another goal in them. Very good effort from Sparks there. Pushes the ball through and Grant Soulsby on the box and manages to beat Dick Meister quite comfortably. Excellent goal. The Galawinku kicking it out from the back again. Trying to push it forward, but they're pushed it back to their keeper. Who holds up the ball patiently. And uh, yeah, just trying to get through the midfield there. But Bannerman actually intercepts now. And Boy is on the move. And he is he's been well saved there by the keeper. But there is still play on here. And they're on the attack there. Free kick there. And they've put it in. But Kerr has made the interception and has pushed it forward. There's Dixon Balls there, threading the needle for Boy, and can Boy get the goal? No, he's missed it badly. That's another Stormtrooper rating there, I believe. So Farts throws it into Astley, and it's Keating with the ball. He's on a yellow there at the moment, so I've got to be careful of that. Scammer puts the ball to no one, really just overcooks it. And uh, anyway, it's Dixon Balls to, to toss a cock off, back to Keating. And Dixon Balls is there, and he cleverly chips the keeper there. So it is 4-1. That was actually a very deft move there by Dixon Balls. I love the work there. And then he just runs onto the ball and just deftly chips it over the keeper's head. And the Galawinku defense had no chance. So 4-1 in the 69th minute. So pretty comfortable in the end here. But uh, got to give Galawinku a lot of credit. Although that is pretty astonishing goal by boy there. So 5-1 now. So Galawinku just run out a bit of steam there. They've been forced to make a lot of defense and a lot of tackling. So I think it's actually just freed up the Humpty Doo boys to actually run a little bit of riot now, now that they've tied them out. So we've got about 15 minutes left with injury time as well. Georgiou, the new man that we've just bought, he's uh, come in there and um, pushed it forward there. But it's back to Astley now. Parts puts a long ball through. It's actually well defended there by the Gallimuku player there, and then it's pushing forward now. They're trying to put defense into attack there. Jackson with the ball, and Grant Salisbury, who was the goal scorer before, has his shot denied by Dick Meister, but they do have the corner. So Santu with the corner here for Gallimuku. It'd be good to see them get another goal, just, you know, because they have actually competed quite well in this game. Galawinku with the corner. Can they put a goal in and just get a little bit more respectability in the score? Looks like Clug there and he crosses it in and it is defended now and Boy has the ball running up field there and uh, puts a nice ball through but it is actually well defended by the Galawinku defender there. Grant Salisbury there as well. Jackson. Again, they're, they're, they haven't given up and that's something to be really, really respected as... Uh, the Galawinku attacker crosses it in. That's not a bad cross, but it's not going to anyone in particular. And Humpty Doo put it, uh, the 
game into attack very quickly and Boy runs onto it and it is 6-1. So Galloway Kill have been pretty gallant in defeat but just there's a little bit of difference in class there. They've had a few opportunities and their XG isn't too bad but they are playing a pretty formidable lineup for him and 6-1 is the final score. And Daniel Collins has actually had an offer from MacArthur FC. A spoiler alert, he will actually take that. Now, uh, before we play the game between us and Dandenong City, we did actually have a game between Palmerston Rovers. Now, Palmerston Rovers are the second team in Palmerston. Palmerston Panthers are the other one. And we had a, a very comfortable 4-0 win there as we prepare for the Dandenong City game. So Tim Kale FFA Cup round two. So teams are just warming up. This is going to be a, a very tough game. Dandenong City are uh, quite a few divisions above us. So we really just need to put our best foot forward. And of course, we've done a lot of traveling to get to Victoria to actually play this game. So Danning will have the running. It's eight minutes in and they've already had three shots on goal to nil there. Astley with the ball, playing it out from the back. Puts it forward there. But the Danning Long defenders are too good and up for the challenge there. There's Tosa Kokov putting it through there. But yes, can't really get forward there. Keating to Giorgio. Flea balls and there's Shen, the big fella. He's standing tall, Eric Shen. That's excellent. Um, and Dixon Balls with the ball and splash. Ooh, that's not a bad effort from a little far out and gave the keeper a little bit of time to actually get there, although I think it was off target anyway. And it's Heron for Danning Long that he's dispossessed by his ass but manages to get the ball back. Webster puts it back to his own keeper. And then Hennessy pushes it forward there. Giorgio, our new signing, is actually back there and actually cleans up very nicely. There's Dixon Balls there. And he's got two men on him, but he's managing to hold the ball up there, getting people into position there. And there is Splash with the goal. 1-0. So that will definitely throw the cat amongst the pigeons. Danny Nong City would not have expected that. So look at this Dixon Balls play again. Just holds the ball up, gives himself options, lets people get into position. And then there's Splash to put the ball past the keeper. So 28, 28 minutes in, we've got a 6-4 to four shot count there, but... The important shot is the one that Dick Splash has put away, so it is 1-0. Although Danny Nong have a free kick and it's just gone over the bar. So winning on the scoreboard and the XG at the moment, which is very, very encouraging. But Danny Nong have the ball on attack again and they have put the ball in net. And they've equalised 1-1. Just a bit of defensive problems there in the box there. The ball came in and... Keating was not able to complete there, and then it's gone off Iaconis for the goal there. Uh, so yes, down to 1-1, one, one, but again, we are competing with a team that are significantly higher than us, and they have a free kick here. Let's see what happens here, and it's hit the post. I don't know if Fisher knew much about that, to be fair, but luckily it was actually hitting the post. As we've made it to half time, 1-1. One, one. Still well and truly in the game as we start the second half. There's Bookie putting the ball in there. Dan and Ong are working it out from defence there. They move it into the midfield there. There's flea balls there, passing it back to Keating. And uh, Dan and Ong with the ball, but flea balls dispossesses them and he's on the attack there. Bookie, oh, pushes it across. That was very, very close. He had a really good opportunity. They probably should have done a little bit better there. Uh, Harry Cool gives the suggestion that we should get uh, Keating off. That that could be a... Yeah, see? There it is again. Keating for Goldschmeckel is the call. Uh, oh! Yes, we were very lucky there. Daniel Nong hit the post, and uh, unfortunately for them, it didn't go in. But very fortunately for us... They still have the ball. They're controlling the ball very well there. There is Rosenzweig there. And he's clicked it back to Hennessy. And, oh dear, it looks like Keating's taken that player out. And he was already on a yellow, and he has been sent off. Now, I do expect a lot more from my leaders. He's leading a young team, and he's actually left his team very vulnerable. It's 1-1 in the 65th minute. 
that's really disappointing I, mean, I expect better than that you just can't have your captain getting sent off in a, in a very important game so we dropping uh, Dixon Balls back into the midfield or in, into the midfield uh, where either it's not his natural position but he is a very good player and I'm sure he'll adjust so yeah lacking that defender there I don't want to take Dixon Ball off yet because he is such a good player and there is Goldschmeckel there trying to defend there but we're down to 10 now this is going to be very hard and they have actually put the ball in the net although luckily he's been caught offside which is yeah it's accurate he definitely was offside there they've got three players leading with the intent there so we dodge a very big bullet there 75 minutes in their shot count 13 to 7 against us and the XGs are going against us now down to 10 the boys have got to do a lot of defending still 1-1 though they're holding out very stoutly there Danny Long on the attack and uh, it goes to Bookie who holds the ball up but he's dispossessed they're double teamed and they have scored the goal but again Iaconis the goal scorer from the first half is offside so the gods are smiling on us at the moment but I don't know for how much longer we can hold this out 84 minutes in there can we at least get to full time so we can actually have a bit of a breather we've got a lot of players that need a rest I'm a bit concerned about Astley who's out in his feet there anyway Bannerman in extra time throws the ball in and uh, it is between at the back for Danny Long City Queefer on the field now. There's Astley still in the field. I think we must just have a shortage of defenders there. Can't really do anything about that. But yeah, he's going to be very tight at the end of the game. There's Bannerman putting it forward there with Shen. And Shen is interrupted there. And he can't do anything with that. He, he definitely got balked there. But obviously it wasn't whistle material there. So there's Bannerman there with the ball. Holding it up, but uh, the defense is all over him there. Manages to get it to Queefer though, who puts it through, but it's just a little bit too powerful. And Splash, who's also on a yellow, can't get there. So, Bookie to toss a cock off there. Splash, can he actually put the goal? Oh, he's hit the post again. That could have been the game right there. Oh, that's very, very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. Again, we've got to remember that he's only just come back from injury as well. But, uh, yeah, we've... You've got to take those sorts of chances, especially when you've only got 10 men. I mean, I can't be too disappointed with the lads because they're really competing really well, but it's just, I can't see them getting any more opportunities. That was, uh, that was a god of one. That's one he would have expected to put away as well. Anyway, Danny on the attack there, and they put it through, and Fisher with the save. So they are holding on valiantly here. There's Goldschmeckel with the throw-in to toss a cock off back to Goldschmeckel. Puts the ball through. There's Splash. Can he cross it through? There's no one there. There's three three defenders to one attacker, and that's probably an issue of tiredness, I would suspect. A lot of these players are out on their feet. Um, Splash with the ball there, and toss a cock off back again. And puts it through there to Splash, and there's Bookie, and the Dandenong City defense is too robust and too strong there, and they have turned uh, defense into attack really quickly. Icon Iaconis has passed it on to Hammer Kyotis and Hammer Kyotis has broken the deadlock. 2-1 in the 98th minute. Very sad that we weren't able to hold on, but you can't fault the boys. They've been playing with 10 men for over half an hour now. So the skipper, who may not be the skipper after this game, has got to really hang, him, hang his head in shame there because it's really let his side down. And Danny Long City cross it in, and there's Rosenzweig again, and it is defended off the line there, but Danny Long still have the ball. And that is a great goal. Sammy Noir. I don't know how, I don't know if that's the right way to say his name, but I just call him Sammy. That was a, a sensational goal. Outside the box there, controls the ball, and then just drills it. Look at this. Bang. Yeah, I can't, can't really fault Fisher on that one. That, that was just a, an amazing strike there. So 3-1 now. It's sad because the scoreboard does not reflect the effort that the boys have put in today. I'm disappointed for them and really annoyed at Keating. 
And we did have our chances there. We're second part of extra time there. Not too much longer to go now. Pudler there pushing it through to Irwin. And they're looking for their fourth goal now. Hamakiotis has done it for Danny Long. So quite a comfortable win for them on the board. But they've really had to work for it. They've had to go the extra 30 minutes to get the results. And considering that they are a few divisions higher than us, I, I actually am pretty proud of the boys and their efforts. Just disappointed because we did actually have our opportunities there and 11 on 11, maybe the score's different. There's Goldschmeckel putting it through there to Astley. And Kuifer there putting it forward there. Splash still trying to run there. He's been brought down badly. And it looks like they've finally evened up the numbers there, but we have one minute left in the game, so it's really not going to help us. But Kuifer with the free kick outside the box. Ready to, to go now, and he's curled that into the corner. That That's actually a pretty nice way to finish the game. Too little too late, unfortunately, but that, that's a class goal. Curled that in nicely, so excellent job by Regis Kuefer there. Manages just to get it right in the top corner and beats the keeper third tail. But that is all she wrote. So a 4-2 loss in the FFA Cup, which means that we are out. Very disappointing that. Not so much because of the result, but just because of the way it happened. 11-on-11 11 11 with our captain playing and doing the right thing. Maybe I'm, I'm happier with that result, but to lose him in the 65th minute, it when we were 1-1 it just just gave the boys too much to do and you gotta remember these guys are very good but they're also very young so they need a little bit of experience around them to just make sure that they're on the ball anyway guys we're gonna leave it there today thanks for watching and look forward to episode three with you guys see you later